All right, everybody get ready and buckle up because Mike Pompeo gave a speech this week that honestly should terrify you because it's a sign from the Trump administration as to what they're going to do next, or at least what they're heavily, heavily considering. Al Qaeda has a new home base. It is the Islamic Republic of Iran. As a result, bin Laden's wicked creation is poised to gain strength and capabilities. We ignore this Iran Al Qaeda nexus at our own peril. We need to acknowledge it. We must confront it. Indeed, we must defeat it. Now, I know this news will come as a surprise to many Americans. We had Al Qaeda on the ropes after 9 11, thanks to sustained efforts of our brave soldiers, intelligence officers, diplomats, NATO allies, many others who worked tirelessly to defend freedom. There are far fewer al-Qaeda operatives in Afghanistan today than there have been in decades. That remains true. This is an enormous tribute to American resolve, American ingenuity, American leadership, and frankly, raw American military strength. That effort drove al-Qaeda to search for a safer haven, and they found one. The Islamic Republic of Iran was the perfect choice Al-Qaeda has, in fact, carried on a relationship to Iran for nearly three decades. Unmitigated, brazen, grotesque, over-the-top lie. He's a liar. He's lying to you, and he knows he's lying to you. This is the exact same playbook that the government used with Iraq. What was the original argument? What was the original argument before the Iraq War? Oh, Saddam Hussein is working with Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden, and he's giving them cover. And he's uh, taking care of them. And they have an alliance, and they have an allegiance. And that's why we need to go after Saddam, because he's at least partly responsible for 9-11. That was never true. That was wrong from the, from the very first claim at the very first second. But they ran with that, and the media didn't push back. And they, they kept building on the propaganda. And then eventually it became too obvious that it was fake, and so they had to change the argument. And it went from, oh, Saddam is working with Al-Qaeda, to, uh, Saddam has weapons of mass destruction and he might use them on us, to eventually it was just, Saddam's a bad guy and a dictator, and if you don't want to do the Iraq war, you're pro-dictator. They, they had to keep moving the goalposts because they're fucking liars and they kept being exposed as liars. Um... Not by the media, by the way. The media was doing their propaganda every step of the way. But this is the exact same playbook for Iran. Guys, anybody who knows anything about the Middle East, even the tiniest bit about the Middle East, will tell you what. Al-Qaeda is fundamentalist Sunni. They're Salafists or Wahhabists. Iran is a, is a Shia theocracy. Not only are they not allies... They are mortal enemies. You have a, a, a Shia theocracy and, you know, a Sunni fundamentalism. Iran is literally ahead of the United States in terms of um, who Al-Qaeda wants to wipe out. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? That, like, there's deep, deep, among Sunni fundamentalists, anti-Shia sentiment is perhaps even more than anti-American sentiment. Do you not understand that? I know a lot of you guys understand that. Anybody who knows anything about the Middle East understands that. But they're really trying to build the case that no, they're actually allies. And they've been for decades. He said they've been for decades. I, I'm just stunned at the, the nature of the lies that they try to get away with. By the way, there was an admission in that speech where he said, there's far fewer Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan now. So why are we there? He just casually admitted, like, yeah, so, you know, Al-Qaeda's basically been defeated in Afghanistan. So why are we there? Why are we there? Why are we there? Because the original reason for going into Afghanistan was what? We got to go to Osama bin Laden. He's been dead for so long. Why are we there? Well, you know, you got to make sure you get, um... It's not just Osama bin Laden that's the problem. You got to get Al-Qaeda. You just admitted that there's very few Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. Why are we there? Uh, the Taliban. Okay, but the Taliban is a guerrilla army. They're not just a terrorist organization. That's where they are. 
You can, what are you going to defeat all of them? That's not even possible. So why are we there? Listen, then you get into the, the serious conversation, the real conversation, that a lot of this stuff has to do with the military industrial complex and, you know, warfare is welfare in some respects. It's intricately tied to our economy. There's jobs tied to the military industrial complex in 50 out of 50 states. There's tremendous amounts of mineral wealth, trillions of dollars of mineral wealth in Afghanistan. Opium, of course, in the case of Iraq, you have... Um, Oil as well, uh, production shot through the roof after the U.S. invasion and during the occupation. I mean, the list goes on and on. There are financial reasons, there are geopolitical chessboard reasons, um, and it, this stuff is ugly, but it's real and it's true. And again, military-industrial complex alone. Smedley Butler said it. War is a racket. This is this is a lot of the considerations. Now, I'm not saying that the justifications aren't somewhat believed because they are. Some people that are part of this machine believe the rationalizations and the lies and the justifications, but they're just that. They're rationalizations and they're lies. So, he's admitting there's far, f few Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, but he's not following that up with, and we're going to totally get out because why the hell would we be there if there's few Al-Qaeda there? He doesn't say that. And also the deep, deep, deep irony, deep irony of he's saying Iran is working with Al-Qaeda. This is at the same time that the U.S. government has been giving arms and money to jihadist elements on the ground fighting the civil war in Syria. That's not my opinion. We have General Petraeus on the record saying, let's arm Al-Qaeda because they might fight ISIS. And of course, they also wanted uh, th them to fight Bashar al-Assad. That's not me saying it. The freaking Daily Beast mainstream publications reported that General Petraeus and elements of the U U.S. intelligence and the U.S. deep state and the Pentagon, they were saying, let's arm Al-Qaeda because they could be our ally. Hmm. What does that sound like? That sounds exactly like the 1980s with Ronald Reagan when they were fighting the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. Let's arm the Mujahideen. And then eventually the Mujahideen broke up, became the Taliban and Al-Qaeda, and we had armed our enemies. We had provided material support to our enemies, the people who went on to attack us. So, it, it, talking about the alliance between Iran and Al-Qaeda, which doesn't exist. Meanwhile, the U.S. has aligned ourselves with jihadist elements, not only in Syria, but we give multi-billion dollar weapons deals to, you know, Mohammed bin Salman and Saudi Arabia as they're carrying out a genocide in Yemen. Let me ask you a question. Who do you think is on the ground fighting the Houthis in Yemen? The Shia Houthis. Who's fighting the Shia Houthis? Sunni militias. Who are the Sunni militias? Hmm. Let's think about that one. Al-Qaeda! So we're providing arms and money and support to Al-Qaeda on the ground in Yemen, on the ground in Syria, as he pretends like there's an alliance with Iran and Al-Qaeda, when Iran's been fighting Al-Qaeda. The guy who they just assassinated, General Soleimani, he was one of the top anti-jihadist fighting forces on the ground. And we murdered him. We assassinated him. The U.S. government did that. The lies are so over the top, man. It's disgusting. But what the hell are they planning? Why is he giving this speech? He met with the head of Mossad recently. Why'd you meet with the head of Mossad? Are they really trying to plan an attack right before they leave office? They've got like nine days left. Are you really building up the case for an attack now? What are you doing? Or are you setting a table for Biden to then grab the football and he does the attack? What are you doing? I don't know what you're doing. But either way, it's scaring me because it leads me to believe the propaganda, they're really pouring it on heavy now, trying to say Iran works with Al-Qaeda to get everybody riled up. Seems like they're planning an attack before they leave office. For the love of God, I hope that's not the case. Oh my God, that's the last thing I want because yet it would become, it would be worse than Iraq. It would be an even worse situation than Iraq. This is unacceptable, man. The neocons are a danger to the planet. They really are. And who knows what the hell Trump is thinking now that he's been slighted in 47 different ways because he screwed over the Republican Party and now it looks like Republican leadership like McConnell turning on him. So he feels isolated, was kicked off Twitter. Who knows what's going on in that peanut brain behind the scenes? He might push the button just to cause chaos at this point. And it's on record that he wants to leave Biden with a mess. There's no better way to leave Biden with a mess than to start a war on your way out the door that he's then got to deal with. Oh my God. Guys... This should absolutely terrify you. This should terrify you. This should scare you. It really should. 
Mike Pompeo lying about Al-Qaeda and Iran and them working together. Where's the media on this? What? I'm an idiot, loudmouth YouTube host, okay? I'm not special. I'm a dude with a mic on YouTube. Why am I the only one that's talking about this? Like, I saw this was covered by, like, NBC and other outlets, and they just tweeted the, the video of the speech from Mike Pompeo. No context, no explanation, no breaking it down, no dissecting it and saying, this is not true. They just showed his speech. It was like, what do you mean? Yeah, Secretary of State is just talking. What's the big deal? The big, he's lying to the American people in the same way that we were lied into the Iraq War. Don't you want to point that out? Don't you want... And by the way, with all the social media purges and banning people, um, if you're going to start banning people for lying or advocating violence, saying Iran and Al-Qaeda are working together and building up the propaganda to do war against them, that seems like a worse lie than anything I've ever heard anybody from Stop the Steal ever say. By the way, they're full of shit and they're wrong about everything, right? The election was not stolen, it's not fraudulent. But as bad as that is, this is way worse. Trying to get the United States of America into another war with Iran, building up the propaganda, and there's no fact check. Forget not pulling it down. There's no fact checking. There's no nothing. And just so everybody understands, I'm not actually saying pull it down. I'm in favor of free speech, but that actually, I'm objective on that point and I'm principled. Only direct threats of violence shouldn't be allowed. But like, isn't it interesting how the U.S. government can get away with whatever the hell they want to get away with when it comes to imperialism? When it comes to the empire, they get away with whatever the hell they want to get away with. They can say whatever the hell they want to say. Doesn't matter how big, brazen, bold of a lie it is, they can say it. So there is no real, like, objective ministry of truth that determines what's acceptable and what's not acceptable on social media. And people are pretending like that's a thing or like that can exist. It's just stupid. But where is the media to fact check this? Instead of fact checking it, they're going to do their bidding and they're going to help build up to war. And it's terrible. And again, you guys have to go to freaking YouTube shows. To hear people like me talk about this. And that's a shame. You shouldn't have to turn to people like me to talk about this. This should be debunked by every major media outlet. But they're not going to do it. And it's dangerous.